The X570 chipset series has not been very kind with MSI. Um, last month, I had reviewed the MSI X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, and oh, it, it was really not the greatest board I had reviewed. And, and today, hoping that the Edge was a one-off, I am reviewing the MPG X570 Gaming Pro Carbon Wi-Fi, the most common MSI mid-range gamer you will find out there. And needless to say, if MSI get this one wrong, the entire lineup will suffer. If MSI get this one wrong, the entire human race might get instinct and get your uh, uh, last day, your doomsday shelter ready because the carbon is or might be just as bad as my English. The NPG X570 Gaming Pro Carbon goes head to head against the very good Asus Prime X570 Pro, the Aorus X570 Pro Revision 1, and the ASRock uh, X570 Taishi. Only that, all of which are excellent boards, and, and I have all uh, reviewed in their own time, and that you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. That is the tightest. A most uh, competitive segment of the gaming market and, and one segment was so, so hard to get into that manufacturers uh, at times actually lose money on this motherboard. They overspend because if they get this motherboard well established, it, it does benefit the entire lineup, which is very good for the consumer, obviously. And reviewing um, a carbon is not just reviewing one motherboard, it is really reviewing the entire manufacturing process in play. Now, starting with the obvious, we are dealing with a four layered ATX PCB and that is not just any PCB. Uh, this is a server graded PCB, which has a tighter plastic thread, meaning a better signal isolation, which obviously when you're dealing with a PCIe 4.0 uh, enabled motherboard has its importance in terms of durability and stability. So definitely an improvement we have to notice coming from the edge to the Carbon series. It is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting both second and third generation of AMD Ryzen processors. Now note that the PCIe 4.0 abilities of this board will only be unlocked when coupled with a Ryzen 3000 series processor. VRM wise, um, here MSI went a little bit obscure. It really went dark on me because uh, it selected MOSFET power stages I'd never seen before coming from a company called Cubic. And I was very excited to see uh, the specs. Uh, once I realized it was a 56 amp power stage, I was like, okay, we're in the green. This is 560 amp worth of CPU centric power. This is going to be awesome. Not that much. As soon as I tried to overclock say uh, eight physical core, or uh, the 3900X, where I really pushed it to the limit, I saw temperatures which were reminiscent of the disastrous X570 gaming age uh, uh, Wi-Fi I had reviewed last month. And I mean, it's, it's a little bit cooler, but still it's flirting with the 100 degrees Celsius, which makes me really uncomfortable in terms of durability and uh, of the motherboard and obviously performances since it's going to thermal throttle left and right. So unless you're going for custom water cooling monoblock on this motherboard, this is really, really a poor choice and a choice that I've, I have a hard time to understand because heat sinks wise, MSI is known for going for the extended uh, uh, heatsink design, again, available on the Edge and, and other MSI motherboard, but here's the one for something rather small and short, premium to the touch, but with not much uh, radiating surface, and, and that goes hand in hand with inefficiency. Uh, so again, uh, it would, it is, I'm sure, a great uh, a VRM if you custom order cool the motherboard, but out of the box, if you're going with anything more than six physical core or eight non-overclocked 
uh, a physical core, I would be very, very cautious. Memory-wise, we have our usual dual channel, able to support up to 128GB of DDR4RAM, overclockable up to a very modest 3.466 gigahertz coupled with a second generation Ryzen CPU and overclockable up to a much faster 4.4 gigahertz if equipped with a third gen Ryzen CPU. Obviously, this is one of the many performance advantage you'll have when using the latest third generation of Ryzen CPU coupled with the X570 powered motherboard. Staying in the memory, the MPG X570 Gaming Pro Carbon can support up to two horizontal M.2 solid state drive, which coupled with the second generation of Ryzen CPU will go as fast as the PCIe 3.0 standard will allow them to go, meaning 32 gigabit per second. But couple the board with the third generation Ryzen CPU and you will unlock the the Gargan 2 ask PCIe 4 bandwidth ability of your board and given the right kind of M.2 solid state drive sticks, you will see speeds up to 64 gigabit per second. PCIe 4, brother, PCIe 4. In both cases, these sticks will hit quite a bit. And that is exactly why we do have these two thick, heavy thermo padded heat shields, which do a great job at keeping our sticks away from the big, mean, thermo throttling spaghetti monster. Chipset wise, we have a rather hot 11 watt X570 chipset, which explains why we do have an active cooling solution on all X570 powered motherboard. The only uh, critic I'll have here, unlike all of its competition, which decided to go for turbine delta fan, uh, MSI decided to go for classical fan which obviously I am not a big fan of. <laughs> I don't really understand this because for one it's less durable, uh, it's probably around 30,000 hours or 40,000 hours against 60,000 on Delta and it makes much more noise. Now on the heatsink itself, I have to give it to MSI, it's definitely bigger, uh, thicker and, and more effective than what, was, uh, what I've seen on the Edge series, so I don't see any problem other than a bit more uh, noise than on the competition. I don't see any overheating issues chipset wise. Export wise, we have four PCIe slots, two single slots, two single speeds, two 16 slots with different speeds. Only the closest one to the CPU has 16 PCIe lanes. Therefore, this is where you'd want your single CPU for optimal performances. In a dual GPU configuration, our PCIe slot will be sharing bandwidth amongst them, giving us an eight by eight configuration. And talking of bandwidth, when run with a Ryzen 3000 CPU series and therefore running this board in a PCIe 4.0 configuration, the available bandwidth per lane doubles, giving us up to 32 gigabyte per second worth of bandwidth on our 16 PCIe slot. But beware, having a PCIe 4.0 enable slot doesn't mean better gaming performances unless you have a video card which can output more bandwidth than the PCIe 3.0 standard, which is not the case yet. Probably in a few months when the NVIDIA Amper will come out and then the PCIe 4.0 will take uh, uh, all of its sense. But until then, PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard is more about future proofing or very, very fast M.2 solid state drive storage. Now, uh, despite having metallic reinforcement on our 16 PCIe slots, um, this is not an SLI compliant motherboard, so not the greatest multiple GPU mobile out there. It's Crossfire, so if you want to play with dual AMD Radeon video cards, it's great, but you cannot do so with NVIDIA GPUs, uh, which, you know, I'm quite sad about. Now, storage-wise, we do have the usual obsolete six SATA third generation plugs, which will bottleneck your motherboard up to an impressive six gigabit per second uh, uh, in red zero one or 10 configuration. Again, I'm not a fan of it. I don't understand why we still have it on our motherboard. We should be able to get something better, especially in the day of the X570 chipset, but fine, fine. Back IO wise, well, we do have a nice padded back IO shield, which is always nice, but completely expectable at this price range. Starting from the left, we do have a useful and not always available flashback button, a PS2 keyboard mouse plug, two second generation USB plugs, two five gigabit USB plugs, four 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a Type-C, an HDMI 1.4 for our Vega integrated graphics, which is nice, um, but, <sighs> You know, uh, on this price range, 
On that kind of motherboard, I'm not a fan of seeing uh, integrated graphics output because one, it takes a lot of power from the VRM. So we could have had more power phases going directly for uh, the CPU. And secondly, um, the processor which come with Vega graphics are really the bottom range uh, of the Ryzen processors. So uh, when you're spending $200 plus, you're not gonna go for an $80 or $150 CPU, you're probably gonna go for Ryzen 7 or, or up. So I don't really see the useness of this kind of options on this kind of motherboard. And obviously you are going to destroy me on the comment section, but that's just the way I feel. A Wi-Fi 6 AX200 dual band adapter, which is a nice upgrade coming from the edge and which can transfer up to 2.5 gigabit per second. A 1 gigabit LAN. Finally, we have the usual 7.1 channel ALC1220 codec from Realtek, which thanks to dedicated PCB for each of the left and right audio channel, is rather very well isolated and one of the rare instances where you can both uh, um, record and listen to good quality Realtek codec. So I guess that's a kudos to MSI. On board connection wise, well, nothing groundbreaking far from it. We have two second generation USB connectors as well as two 90 degrees angled 3.25 gigabit USB plugs. No type C, which uh, given the X570 chipset bandwidth ability is again rather disappointing but my disappointment does not end here no it does not we have only six pwm fans connector one of which can support a all-in-one or dedicated water pump and i'm not happy because given the fact that this is a carbon board and uh, potentially and usually the base uh, for uh, custom water cooling builds who have almost nothing to work with. I mean, one water pump, five fans, you can put splitters, but it's not what you're looking for in an enthusiast-ready motherboard. Especially knowing that since Gigabyte has introduced hybrid connectors, which can support equally either a fan or a water pump or a, a, a flow connector a sensor, MSI had no excuses. It's the same price and, and would have given so much more agility and enthusiastness to the very same board. So something I'd like to see uh, evolve in the next iteration of this motherboard. Luckily, we do have some troubleshooting features such as an easy debugger, which I do find pressures in a PCIe 4.0 environment. And of course, this would not be a gaming motherboard without all of the RGB contractions and connections, which can only give sense to our inner self. Starting with two RGB strips, one hidden under the IO roofing and one nested right under our PCB. And if that was not enough, cause it never really is we do have three RGB connectors for our export, uh, including one addressable. In conclusion, the MSI MPG X570 Gaming Pro Carbon Wi Fi will run you about $230 before taxes. And you know, for me, it's a very uneven motherboard. On one hand, we, it has a lot of features. You know, we have the Wi Fi 6, we have uh, uh, a flashback button, a good audio. I mean, I can go on. The list is really good. Lots of peripheral, etc., etc., etc. But when it comes to the basics, the basis of it, the performance delivery, we have real handicaps. Uh, namely, the, 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 the crazy heat, 100 degrees Celsius at VRM level, a thermo throttling, a problem which will really uh, shorten the life expectancy of this motherboard. The fact that we don't have uh, hybrid connectors for enthusiastness, the fact that it's not SLI, so not really the greatest choice in terms of multiple GPU gaming, really takes away all the real incent uh, incentive to, to spend that much money on the carbon, and especially knowing that the competition can offer those options and a much cooler VRM for the same amount of money. And again, I'm gonna repeat what I had said in the conclusion of the edge. It feels more like a marketing rushed motherboard more than an engineered one. And it's not to say it's not a bad motherboard if you're gonna go for a four or a six physical core, you know, it's actually a good choice. Lots of features and the VRM will not hover it that much, but 
If you're after something more powerful, more durable, for the price MSI is charging for this motherboard, I'm sorry, it's simply not good enough.